What's up and welcome to Making the Game Songbringer. Over a year's worth of videos. I don't even know what day it is. I think it's Wednesday. Today I'm going to be making some, um, some new enemies for the ice dungeon. And these are going to be simple, quick enemies. Things I can create quickly. I'm think, hoping to get maybe two, three, four enemies done today. Because um, I created these these um, these ice dragons, and they turned out really great, but they took forever. What's up, T? What's up, Pedro? So yeah, these guys turned out pretty good. Frozen, frozen. Okay. Finals, Euro. Oh, sweet. How's Portugal doing? So yeah, once you kill one of them, um, like their, their claw still hangs there, so you can see they're dead. Um, but yeah, overall, I really like how these guys turned out. They're pretty challenging. Pretty challenging enemy to defeat. Especially if you get hit with your ice. And I'm almost dead. Uh, Yes! Oh, good timing! But no. Oh, so close. Oh, today you played you played well? Right on. Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna get the player in a place where um, I'm ready to, to create this new enemy. What's up, Space My Name? Welcome to the stream! What's up, Sound Dogs? Ahoy! Ahoy, yo! I think this one I'm gonna go to. Uh, with. The Verlog, where the hell is Oh, here it is. Yeah, okay, here we go. Okay, so this area is exit destination. I need to remove from the player's uh, map of where he's been so that it automatically can have the enemy, or it, it won't remove the enemy. So this area has an exit to 00130. Yeah, ice dragons. I just uh, just fought some. Uh, let me see him again. Yeah, I'll show you the ice dragons again. See if I can beat them this time. They're tricky. They're hard. Yeah, they freeze you with the these ice balls they shoot out. They also have a melee attack if you get too close. I just noticed something actually. Their melee attack range needs to be a little higher. A little bigger, wider. God damn. Yeah, hard. Yeah, that's that's what happens when they die, yeah. Their claw gets severed and it stays there. So you can see where they died. And you can know they're dead. Because before, I was like, oh, okay, they die, but I don't, I don't know if they just disappeared or if they're actually dead. 
so I had to like create some kind of um, you know, some kind of animation where it stayed there, and you can see. Oh, there. I want to see. Uh, I want to see what their uh, attack range is. That okay? That's okay, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty big enough. <laughs> They're hard. They're definitely difficult guys to beat. Three of them. <laughs> three of them is pretty um, pretty difficult. So yeah, there you go. Those, those are the, the ice dragons. Um, they're like a mini boss you fight for the switch room. And then they'll I'll repeat and use them a little bit more for the boss. The boss is going to be a big old entity. And then there's also going to be some ice dragons with the boss. So, um, so it should be a pretty difficult boss fight. Uh, but today I'm going to work on some easier, quicker enemies because I spent so long working on those ice dragons. I literally spent like half my budget of my week, uh, you know, time. So basically I need to create some easier enemies so I can get this ice dungeon finished and ship it. Put it out, put it out on Steam, ship it. Cool. So the first enemy I'm created to create is a little flying midge-like, insect-like ice enemy, kind of like a Kind of like the spiders, except that it flies. Uh, so, um, let's fix this wall first. This wall is kind of bugging me. This wall has this color. It just looks all wrong. Does it do the wall door again? Creation wall door. Oh, there it is. Wall door. At. It's using the add sign, so that's good. But I thought I had things working for the. This must be the color. Oh. Okay, so if the color was white. Let's see what that would look like. Yeah, right? The architecture. History. Stuff's gone down. Yeah, okay, that's the problem. It's just the wrong color. Why is it the wrong color compared to, let's see, color? Maybe it's just, shouldn't be using the color mix. Or maybe it's using the wrong wall. No, okay, it's not that. That wall looks so wrong. Compared to the other color. Hmm, let me get this art open for the wall door. Seven, six. Six wall door. I'm gonna compare it to the seven wall door. <clears throat> yeah, they're identical. I wonder what the dungeon, the fire dungeons. Why doesn't the fire dungeon look wrong? Color. Why 
Why is your wall the right color? But this guy's wall is not the right color. Oh, wait. I had that going. Let's turn that around, off. It might just be that it has a little tone to it or something. Whoa, huge earthquake. Dang. Yeah, it still looks fine. Okay. I'm guessing that six wall door and six wall just have some differences. Namely, the hue saturation. Oh. That's right. I forgot I added this tone. Okay, so first I made it sort of light blue, and then I added this effect. Okay. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. I can figure out how to make this wall look right. Bafu kill, I think he's not on right, right now. Not, at least not yet. Okay, so this is Hue 157. And then there's another one which is minus 100. So the six wall door needs similar hue saturation. 157 makes it look bluish. And then saturation minus a hundred, and then there's the wall door ground, and then the wall door. Wall door just doesn't have the opening, and then the wall door ground does. Okay, so this is the wall door ground. Oops. Just fixing the art here, making this look right. Whoa. 1400. And then taking away the ground bit. We render that as six ball door. Render. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see that fixed the color. Did it not render? Oh, okay, it just didn't render. Like what? What? Feeling good. Feeling good, man. How's everything going with all y'all? Salad dogs. How's the how's the game engine coming? Yes! Oh, nice. We have walls that look right. Okay, so we're going to turn those enemies, the little spiders, into um, the little flying insects. I see flying insects. Hmm. So we're going to need to go into data, foes, and copy the, the verloc 
fire and we'll make him a verloc ice and I'm gonna copy the spied fire and copy it to what am I gonna call this flying insect enemy oh right yeah you've been distracted Oh no, you had to, you aggravated your back? Oh I hate I hate back problems. I have those too sometimes. They use the new allocator, cool. Right on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, your allocator. That's I hear like, oh this is so crazy, there weren't really that many bugs. I'm worried. I know that feeling. You know, I don't know what to call this yet, so I'm just gonna call it the spied ice. And this guy will be flying, even though he's it's like it's a flying spider. It's a flying spider. That's what this is. No, I think I'm gonna call it a midge. Midge ice, because it's flying. It's like a flying midge insect. Midge is how you spell it, right? Yeah, right. Future Americans. Yes, midge. Okay, this is an ice midge. Midge ice. Okay, that's good. All right, now to the verloc. Verlock ice, get that opened up, and the midge ice. Okay, so the verlock, whoops, I don't need the blob three. Okay, verlock ice is going to take no damage from ice, but take double damage from fire. And he spawns, instead of spied fire, he spawns a midge ice. Okay, and then the midge ice What's up, Loki Kappa? <laughs> a lament to the end of British colonialism. Okay, so the midge ice is going to be a flying little insect. Maybe I'll give him the look of the droid bat for now. <laughs> yes, I kind of hope I kind of hope we feel that way too in America here. I kind of hope that everybody that ever was involved in colonialism feels that way eventually. I kind of think colonialism was a bad move myself. Right? Let's just go take everybody's land. We'll call it our own. I never thought that was good at all for the world. We considered adding enemy infighting to the game. Oh, interesting. Now that's cool. Yes, I like that, Salad Dongs. I like that idea a lot. Yes, cool thought. Thank you for sharing. I'm sure that that thought will turn into something really cool at some point. I do want to create a, speaking of like random type of enemies that are totally different than what you'd expect, I do want to add some kind of enemy that's like a little, like a little troll or something like that, that 
that he like shakes you down and like takes that takes some of your money or some of your important items maybe and he runs through a different screen and then you have to go find him on a different screen to get your items back yeah me too i love seeing i love seeing game i love seeing things like that that are really yeah it adds a real interesting and refreshing element to the game too and, and god thank you for saying that right now because like i really need that personally because i've been I've been playing Songbringer every single week for so many months, so I'm really trying to focus on the things that will refresh, you know, my own feelings of excitement. So I'm trying to create, you know, different different dungeons, different enemies, and different situations like that. That's cool. That's a cool situation. Enemies fighting each other. Totally cool. <clears throat> okay, so the droid bat, actually his behavior will, or not the droid bat, the midge eyes, the midge eyes behavior I think should be kind of like the fly, the fly has a really simple behavior that just wanders around the screen, and then if it gets near the player, it annoys the player, so it'll be like that, except that this guy can hurt you, so, let's do that. Right, interesting strategic situation. Right, yeah. What's up, Boogie? Nice, Loki Kappa. Okay, so throwing all this together, let's see if this Verloc Ice can spawn some of these Midge Ices and if the Midge Ices even look anywhere near. How about we'll just make them a little different in that instead of looking exactly like the Droid Bat, they also have a scale of 0 0.5. Well, it's a lot of dots. Oh, what? Oh, that's not a... Okay, we gotta go to the foes and create a verloc type, foe type, a mob type for stairs six. This one's style car, not six. This one's not six. Seven is seven. Six is six. Then it has a verloc ice. Maybe some pulverizers. <laughs> yeah, I agree, man. Yeah. Okay, what? Why are they on fire? Oh, they have little fire. Um, Okay, they're not supposed to be fiery. They're supposed to be icy. Midge ice. Um, this guy has category foe, category ice. So if you if you hit one of these midge ices, you can get, you get frozen. No children. Yes, totally. Yes, right? As is anyone. They're so getting frozen by this little guy. This is kind of cool. These are actually about the right size. Maybe a little bigger, actually. And maybe they do have a child entity that is not fire, but... Like a little icy glow. So that would be like. Fire, fire. Let's get an icy glow. Really? In Hong Kong? 
Uh, yeah. Wow, I never knew that. Well, hey, there's one example, one example of where colonialism actually worked. Hey, it's good to have these counterexamples, right? Because all I thought the whole time that colonialism was just all 100% bad. It's good to know it. It actually wasn't. Oh, right, yeah. Right, it might have just been the lesser of two evils. Mm hmm Yeah, so I don't think I don't think India was very happy with it. Right? Mm, entities. Got one of these, it's like a glow. Glow low. This could work. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let's make this um, circle gradient. Gradient. I'm so good at pronouncing gradient the right way. But I forget what what's that name of that file. Find raw name something gradient. Oh yeah, it's just circle gradient. Okay, okay. Circle gradient, color type. It's gonna be ice. Actually, we'll go color. Make it an icy color. Where is here, Loki? Ah, uh, right. Uh, did um, HUD. This has a lot of different colors on it. Okay, so I want to grab something like that color. What? It's not the right color I just chose. What's up with you, color picker? Oh, I'm getting freaked out. Why isn't the color picker working? Come on, color picker, you can do it. Sample all layers. Oh, not current layer, how did that happen? There. All layers. Oh, America, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, totally. We've got wits. Yeah, America, the dream, the dream really isn't isn't reality. Okay, so it's got a color Z order. Um, do mid, mid, mid plus one glow opacity. Periods, easing. Okay, let's see if that makes these guys have a little bit of a icy glow. This might be way too big. Circle gradient's a big piece of art. Oh yeah, that's way too big. What's going on with the white light coming in like that? It's crazy. I don't know what's going on. Mm, right. Mm hmm. It's 
So this needs to be scaled much smaller. Yeah, I, and that's kind of why I'm I'm actually excited for today's. I'm like I'm excited that we have all these different, um, you know, like documentary movies and things like that that kind of put the truth a little bit, put the truth a little more, and the truth is light, you know. In the internet, we have the internet to be able to communicate more. It does seem like collusion in general is on the, you know. It's in danger, like you said. Mm. Yeah. Two, one, three. Okay, it's probably doesn't need that. Yeah, why is it a double-edged sword? Oh, because it enables laziness? Ah. Okay, I don't know about this idea. I'm trying to put a little glow around this guy. Let's try it one more time though. Position, zero, two. Or anchor offset, let's do an anchor offset instead. Image, circle gradient, anchor, offset, zero, two. <laughs> You're right, Google that for me. Yes. Yeah, it does, it is totally. Lots of people take things for granted. See, there, its glow doesn't reflect it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, let's see a little more. Not working. Okay, this is stupid. I'm taking that out. I'm just gonna create, I'm gonna draw this guy. Well, first they're gonna be behaving right. So the current behavior I copied was like a fly. I'm gonna make it kind of more like a, a bitch enemy. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Right? It's so ridiculous. It is. It is. not quite annoying enough they're supposed to kind of dive bomb the player so hmm Oh, oh man. Teak, that's brave, Teak. Target none, target nearest, friend. Okay, not or foe, but just friend. 
Victor ran. Okay, that works. Delay. Let's make these guys a little bigger. And okay, I needed some kind of like dive bomb. Let's go target near. I don't know, 40. This was really well informed. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> I forgot to wear a condom. I think they're going fast, slow, fast, slow. Yeah, that's what it is. They're going fast, slow. Okay, so they should set a timer or maybe a delay. They'll just delay for half a second. Definitely dive bombing now. Yeah, this is kind of what I was imagining. These little annoying midges. Alright, cool. This is starting to work. Damn, they'll kill you fast. Shazzle. Yes? Jedi Academy? Yes, take a bath, you must. Yay, Salad Dongs, you got one of your, your donation got red. Dude, that's so great. Send me the link. Send us the link to your comment right now. I want to I want to see it. Hey, what's up, Rin, Rinduim? What's up, man? Right, yeah, these guys are totally turning out good so far. They're... Super fast. Maybe they need to be not quite, like this should be random. Like that should be maybe 0.25 to 0.5. And I think they should do a little less damage because they're rocking the hell out of me right there. Okay, they only do 0.25 damage. Maybe I just had low health. Or maybe the Verloc Ice needs to not spawn so many Midge Ices. Yeah, that's a good thing. Here, let's take out half those. Yes, you were very pleased with yourself. Yes, oh great, cool. I can't wait to see. I'll watch it tonight. I'll, I'll look for the part where they say your donate. Tell me where that your donation is, though. Anyways, because I want to like make sure I see it. Oh whoa! Oh, these guys are crazy. The fact that they freeze you is super hard. Okay. We need to do some art too. Okay, so I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the art open and make something so these guys look right. I'm, kind of, I'm imagining they're like a little icy ball. Oh no. That's League of Legends? Oh, dang, man. Sorry to hear that. It sounds like my chess score whenever I play chess. Every time. <laughs> Every time my, my chess score drops like 500 points or something crazy bad.
Oh. Uh, dang. What's, um, oh, uh, right? What's a, so what's like a good score in League of Legends? Like what, what's that stand for? FPS? Hmm. Yeah, that is ridiculous. The so Windows 10 wouldn't support your card. Come on. Come on. So I'm thinking kind of like the Droid Bat. Did I just pass it like a billion? Yeah, I did. Okay. It's an old card, too. That's even more ridiculous. Like, come on, Windows. Midge, Ice, Idle, Save. Midge, Ice. All right. So I can export these. Well, I guess first I'll change the color and the size. What's up, Jonah? Making um, I'm making a new enemy here. This is a little ice midge. He's he's like a, it's like a flying spider kind of. And but he really these guys really dive bomb you here. Let me show you what what I got so far. They're like little dive bombers that are crazy. So they just and because they freeze you too, they're like super hard. I think I might I think these guys might not it might be a bad idea to make these guys freeze you. Because they're because they die bomb you so fast that it's like almost impossible to dodge. There, I'm dead already. Wow. Yeah, that's how to make a difficult enemy, just do that. Which is a good thing and a bad thing. You gotta kinda balance that out. Nice, right on, 22 minutes in. Okay, cool. I'm checking this out. Oh, Jonah, if you wanna see Salad Dongs did Salad Dongs did a donation last night for SGDQ and his donation got read in a Yoda voice. So like you know. Twenty two minutes in. Awesome. Wait, is that 20? That's not 22 hours, is it? Anyways. Oh, 20, yeah, it is 22 hours. Okay. 22 hours in. All right. Okay. Now I know where to go. 22 hours, 14 minutes. Thanks. Thanks. Got it. Okay. So, hey, what's up, uh, Akarmi? What's up, Akarmi? Welcome to the stream. Okay, so, yeah, first thing I want to do is make... Okay, I'm, I've started with the art for the droid bat here, and I'm just going to make it look more like an ice midge type thing. So a little smaller and a lot brighter, bluer colors. So, I got my graphics tablet. Oh, donations. Yeah, you no, you didn't miss anything. It's just that uh, he was playing. Um, he was on SGDQ. Salad dogs can explain it. He was on SGDQ and he made a donation, and they read his donation. So some, you know, sometimes they'll read donations on SGDQ. It kind of depends on whether they're like um, whether they have time to read it at that time. So his not only did they have time to read his thing and like they, he actually got chosen, and they read his thing in a Yoda voice. I can't wait to check it out. <laughs> what is this game engine? The game engine I'm using is called Cocos 2DX. Okay, so starting with making them a little smaller. I like the size of this enemy here. 
I took this droid bad art and made it about 60% the size. So let's see that art again. I want to see if it would look like a little bigger. Yeah, that's right. Okay, 60% is good. Now, wait, wait, wait. I do want to try. I want to play with this scale just before I... Before I commit to making some new art, it's nice to play around with proportions. Proportions are, you know, a little bigger, a little smaller, and then you can like, and then you draw it right the first time. Maybe not. Maybe it's, it's 0.75. One thing is they kind of get stuck. Yeah, okay. 0.75. That's the scale we're going to go with. All right. So. If I were to take that frame and make it 75% as big. It would look like about like that size. Yeah, and grabbing some ice colors. Let's grab that color and that color. Today is easy enemy day. Last the last three days have been difficult enemy days. I mean, difficult development days. So I'm trying to do some easier development days just to remind myself how fun and easy game development could be. Whoa, day of wow. Da, 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 boop, 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 boop. Okay, so we got a good little palette there to start with. Get this, uh, this nice highlighty color. Look how quick this guy is. <laughs> I love small enemies. It's so fast and easy to draw. Maybe he has like a purple eye. In our little world. Maybe we'll just draw a little tree over here. 50%, uh, no, 50 there. Well, I'm imagining what would it look like if his edges were kind of like that, like 50% opaque. That didn't work. I want to draw at 100% opacity and then, oh, there it goes. What? No, uh, that's not right. That's better. Next enemy, the fly. There already are flies, but they're not enemies. Nice. Do, 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 do. Okay, this looks okay, I guess. Let's get rid of these frames.
Mm. Yeah, I hear you guys. Oh, you're in New York too. Dang. I hear you. Yeah, week to week. That's oh man. Luckily, I'm I'm doing all right right now, but I'm pretty much exist under the poverty line, at least the American standard of poverty. I I live in poverty, you could say, but I'm I don't feel like I live in poverty. I live a pretty nice life. Hmm, he's got kind of like a jilted little flying animation. Let's see what that looks like. Midge Ice Idol Render. Right? Roof over the head, food in the fridge. Yeah, we got it. We got it. It's like the the American poverty line is it's pretty forgiving compared to compared to other countries. We are like rich. Rich. Small stuff to appreciate new GPU. Yeah, got to get one. Okay, let's see what these look like with... Okay, now, the first thing, we need to start like... Okay, wait, I did... I needed to take off the scale now. Nice music. Cool. Right on, what kind of, what's your, what do you do in music? Production, performance, instrumentation, recording. What, what, what is it? This guy's look good now. They're more icy, for sure. But they're still freaking hard as hell because they freeze you. Okay, I wanted, I gotta try it without them freezing you because seriously. It's so easy to get frozen and then killed fast. Oh, generally hip hop, nice. Yeah. Du -du -du. Okay, so yeah, they need to start moving more. What's what is causing them to stay? Are they stuck? Okay, I'll turn on um, Trotty Bug. Or actually, let's run it. Yes, oh yeah, absolutely. Link your stuff. Always. Oh, it's always welcome. Okay, wait, they are targeting. Happens when they get spawned. Okay, it's just like close. Okay, that's that guy. Warning. Target. Target fast. Target. 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 It's just like target. 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 So something's wrong with the target. Or oh, maybe it's just it targeted and then it didn't find anything else to do. Maybe they need to spawn a little bit more south. Like, what if they were all 14? Nice. Loki beats? What's up, Red Sands? Oh yeah, that time they came out right. Okay, let's let's check this out. Yeah, 
Yes, Popfu's alive. Ooh, check it out. It's lucky. Because if so, YouTube is crazy good at flagging your video. Flagging my videos for copyright infringement. Whenever I play music, it's like, you played music on your video? That's not right. You can't do that. Oh, there's stream lag? Really? Huh. Oh, it's good now? Oh, all right. Oh, I was asking if, um, okay, I was asking if, if I play your music right now, if it's copyrighted, and if YouTube will flag my video. Because, like, because YouTube is crazy good at noticing when music is copyrighted. It's better, okay, I don't know what was up. Maybe it was, maybe it was Twitch. It's not, okay, all right. Okay, let's hope. Let's hope that YouTube does not flag this. Because I want to check it out. Nice, right on. To the jungles of Peru. Capture a minute to meditate. Capture a minute to meditate. Dollar dashboard, parking out dirty dog, but knowledge backwards. Tug the 30 odd six out in Halifax, punk, pump purple tops with hands of a salamander. Divine, pretty thick in your mind. Shot through my prison designs. I impregnate thoughts so they plug. Wanna set away from gun in my course to a chunk. Even lead based paint if you think you slick. Strangle in electric air with British petroleum on my fingerprints. Crested the mountaintop and let the girl I assure you, the secrets of life you can't reveal. The suckers still playing themselves to have mass appeal. And what they lack in skill, they make up for in mass and guilt. So it's back downhill from here. No breaks. Names out sphinx or lowercase, no space. Is it better now that I turn the volume down? In the bathroom store, through the wormholes of snap through the floor, to the sleeper cells just catching on. Watch this, unlatch the jaw, go for viper. Found him drowning his thoughts, ultra violent in the coach's cycle. We'll play faces, we went through syntax, the clock the sewer. I'm a connoisseur of an impact. Artificial sweetener, fake roller derby. The authenticity is eaten through your toe first. So vermin, going in the paint with no jersey. Long as she arched the bishop, winding her clothes, her tally ho. The wild souls leave a carbon footprint. Split to the fractal, keep the shard about you wood nymphs. Caught the all seeing eye, cameras on the street. Who's that standing on the lead? Capture a minute to meditate. Capture a minute to meditate. Yeah, it sounds like a death is really good. Capture a minute to meditate. And um, the drum, the biggest thing I appreciate. Is it there's no... What's that, what's that freaking auto tune effect? Taking the sword oh fish well, Thank you for not using auto tune. Dodging the smoke rings, bleeding off the cigarette. I know that's not an auto tune. Sugar fat lashes, fast from dribbling, tapping your cross. I really don't know. And none of the cracks in my ears don't form bangs to shoot through the fighter rope. Son of a son collapsing in on itself. And broke is just an abstract, so I am bitter as hell. Which 
What's up, Broba? Yeah, this is um, this is Loki's music. Okay, so back to making these little midge ice guys. I'm gonna make a dying animation for them real fast. Uh. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, definitely. Good. That was pro. That was definitely pro quality music, man. Good production, for sure. Image size percent, 75% size. Wait, what is this first? This is uh, 52 by 52. I'm just going to make it. 75% the size and then make it back to the original size with the um, side shortcut. Damn it. It's that one. Okay. 75%. Looks like crap, but that's all right. Because we're going to make it bigger. And paste on this guy's idle. Looks kind of like that. Uh, here we go. Make sure that's centered. Twenty six. Yeah. Okay, that's centered. Cool. Oh, that's right. This kind of like shifted back and forth. Do left. Left, right. That's a bit extreme. Maybe less pixels there. Boom. So I'll just draw a little, like, this is a dying animation. It's, this guy's inspired by this other guy.
no, there's not actually. I don't think there's actually a thousand owners of Songbringer. I think it's an estimate on Steam Spy or whatever. Most of it's sample bait based. Uh huh. Cool. All right, so we can make that maybe like 50% or so. Maybe take it away from this frame. This is so nice and refreshing to make a simple enemy. This guy's so much simpler than the complex enemies I made this week. Yeah, I know. Steam Spy says that. Yep. But yeah, I don't think it's I don't think that's right. Because they I've you know, I've there's I don't think I've I don't th there's definitely not that many people that have that have ordered the beta version. Um and I definitely haven't given away that many free codes to like streamers and other YouTube people, so I think that's just wrong. I think it's like plus or minus 500 or whatever. I don't know. I'm not even sure how many people have Songbringer so far. Yeah, huge margins of error. Yeah, I don't know why it does, but it does. It does. Oh, that's why you shared the first one? Yeah, nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Steam Spy is like good for estimating, but it's like horrible for getting you accurate information, you know? You got zombie here, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, the late nineties. Did you, um, Loki? Did you see uh, the movie Dope? It just you made me think of the movie Dope because it's got um that one scene in it where they're talking about nineties hip hop. Da, 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 da. Right? It's a collage. This is like one of the easiest ways to make new art is to take old art and kind of repurpose it a little. That's what I'm doing here with this guy. Just made it a little smaller. Different color. And since this was already a decent animation, it's really easy to just repurpose it. I'm I'm collaging right here, right now. Mm. Right, yeah. Yep.
or sometimes like somebody will take a piece of um, like a song and then they really they really don't add enough of their own, you know, stuff to it. I can definitely see that being a situation where they they would have to pay, you know, what the same thing you're just saying there. Yeah, if you're synthesizing something new, creating something new. I'm copyrighted. I'm, I'm breaking my own copyrights here. By sampling myself. I think legally that's true. If you're if you take a sample of a larger work and then you change it enough, I think legally you do have a a you could have a case in court that you did change it enough or that there was what's it called prior use? Not maybe it is fair use. Maybe it's called fair use or prior use or something. Caleb, if I were to pre-order the closed beta, would you have any problem with me streaming the gameplay? Oh, absolutely. Stream the gameplay. Yes, go right ahead. There's plenty of people already streaming Songbringer and doing YouTube videos of Songbringer 2. You're totally, um, legally even, legally even, you're all good. See, there's a, there's a little thing here on my website that at the end of the press kit, it gives you legal permission to monetize. So yeah, you're totally allowed to make videos of Songbringer now and in the future. Go right ahead. And all of that, if you want to find that link yourself, just go to songbringer.com and you can click on press kit. And it gives you all that. It gives and it's the link here at the bottom, monetization permission. So yeah, you're all good, man. You're totally good. Right, fair use. Oh, right, but with music it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I think that's, what color would I just have in my, oh, that's this color. Yeah. So what, man, what day is this? Day three, I think it's 390 actually. 390 development, or video, 390 videos. It's not actual development days. Yes, totally. Yeah, it's free marketing for me. Yeah, totally. Yeah, for, yeah, totally. Same thing for you. You're getting your stuff out there. You're getting... Right, but it's the expression too, huh? Yeah, the expression. It's good to express yourself, right? And to express yourself in ways that only you can. That's That's a really good feeling. I know what you mean about expressing yourself there. It's like you have a message to share that really only you can share. It's maybe it's not even words, it's, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily words. It's just an artistic expression. It's a piece of art. It's a piece of music. And you make the world a better place by making it too. I firmly believe that, that as an artist, it's like our responsibility to uplift the world in a way, to entertain the world. Because, you know, there's people out there that are already saving the world. They're already, you know, they're already working on new energy technologies and, you know, things like that. My gift is to be creative and to entertain the people that are that are making the world a better place. You know what I mean? Because without me, without me making a form of entertainment um, called a video game, that the people that are, the people wouldn't, people wouldn't be able to do what they do as much because everybody needs to kick back and relax and be entertained, you know? Right? Yeah, you, business, being business-minded is tough. Yeah, there definitely is. There's a, definitely a tension involved there. And with game development, it's, pro, it's just as strong or if not stronger, that tension. But it can be used... You can use that tension um, for good, for, for the benefit of your project, whatever it is. You just got to learn to harness it, you know, and to to recognize it and to flow with both kinds of 
energy, right? You've got the, you got one side, you've got the energy that makes you want to do artistic things and creative and all that. And on the other side, there's a part of you that wants to share it, you know, and, and to get it and to express it, to get it in front of, to get it in front of other people, basically, to make other people aware of it and all that. And that, and you can use both those energies in ways and at times, right? Like sometimes you might be in the mood for marketing and sometimes you might be in the mood for creating and learning, you know, when to do both, when to, I mean, when to do one and when to do the other. That's really all there is to it. I express myself artistically by not solving problems of clients quickly when they disrespect my team. There you go. Right? Yeah. Yeah, right? To commercialize your stuff. Yeah. And there's really a lot more ways to commercialize your your art, your music, your creations, and there really there ever has been before. And I'm a big fan of crowdfunding, but I'm also I've also seen the the darker sides of crowdfunding. You gotta you gotta embrace both the good and the bad of crowdfunding if you're gonna use it. You know you gotta you gotta be well aware of the traps and the pitfalls of crowdfunding if you're gonna use that. But that said, I think crowdfunding is one of the best ways to commercialize your creative stuff. Being a small time creator, like to to me, I consider myself a small time creator. I'm like one dude trying to make a video game, you know? And so it's like, they're really, crowdfunding is one of the best ways I can get in front of people, get the press to write about my video game, get the funds I need to make my video game. All of that has to do with commercializing, you know? And yeah. Okay, let's see what these guys are like now with that death animation. Yes. Nice, these guys are cool. talking about me living the dream I think you, yeah I am living the dream but it was a it was a very hard path to get here it was not easy to to like not have any income starting this you know like I spent four or five months actually with no income working full-time on this video game just to prepare a Kickstarter and if the Kickstarter had failed I would not have been able to continue making this game. I would have gone and got a job. This is in 2015, early 2015. And I would have gone and got a job. This game would have not been made. So, yeah, it was it was not an easy path. But it was well worth it. It was incredibly rewarding. And to, just doing the Kickstarter got so much more. It earned so much more than I thought it would have. You know, it got the game press. Like all the press quotes you see on the press kit are from the Kickstarter. And um, it got a backing, you know, the funding. It also got, um, you know, a, a fan base started being built around it too. Space, I think I'm only doing crowdfunding for my projects. Cool. Yeah, yeah, nice. Oh, right, camp the entry and spam click. <laughs> nice yes but if if anybody else out there is nice nice yeah good talk team good talk if anybody else out there is watching this video on YouTube or you're, you're in this conversation right now there's a pretty cool video you should definitely see on crowdfunding called capital C 
It's a documentary. Capitol? Capitol. Thanks, Google. You're so good at correcting my spelling. Capital C. Yeah, this is... Yeah, so check this movie out if you're at all interested in doing your own crowdfunding. There's this. I would definitely recommend checking this out. And then also, if you didn't know, I did release an article about how to do crowdfunding on Gama Sutra. Um, Gama, here it is. Yeah, if you just search for Gama Sutra and Nathaniel Weiss, you'll find it. Or if you search for The Cure for Indie Game Failure. But this is all about how to do a Kickstarter for your own video game. But I think this could easily apply to other artistic things too, like doing your own music album or whatever. Anything that's kind of creative. Yeah, Jonah, congrats. Two days in a row, one free parking. What's up, Matt CC? <laughs> yes, salad dogs. Well, a lot of people are asleep right now. You know, either they're either asleep or they're at work and things like that. So they watch on YouTube. Oh no, you lost your hard drive? Oh man, dude. That sucks. No backups, nothing? Okay, I'm gonna fight these guys one more time because I'm so happy with that last fight that I didn't really notice if there's anything wrong with these guys. Okay, once again, midge fight. Here we go, midge fight. Yeah, and if you don't have a backup, <laughs> hello, mom. If you don't have a backup, check out Backblaze. If you don't have like a backup drive or whatever, Backblaze is like $5 a month and it backs up everything onto their secure online storage. But yeah, it's, wait, is it still five bucks a month? It used to be five bucks a month. Yeah, it's five, it's only five bucks a month. You don't need you don't need an external hard drive or whatever to back up onto. And then what's great is it's in the cloud, so if you need, like, um, if your hard drive, if your whole house burned down, or let's say if your house was floating, like I used to, I used to live on a boat and do all my development on a boat and things like that. And I'm like, I need to have some kind of backup solution where I don't, you know, if my boat sank. I wouldn't have lost everything. So I had this for a while. So maybe that helps to somebody out there. Okay, Midge fight. Oh, Git has optimization for large binary files? Oh. Oh my god. Yeah, their storage is good. Cool. God. Stuck on that wall there. I wonder why. Come out to play. Oh, little bastard. Yeah, not easy. This is not an easy fight, but especially if you're getting pummeled by that. Oh, right. The ice on the ground also makes it kind of a whoa. Yeah, the ice is, makes it really tricky. Oh my god, that pulverizer. I think that pulverizer needs to go. I'm gonna take that out for first. I'm taking that out. Let's comment that guy out for a minute. Nice. Oh, cool. Right? Yeah, I know. To lose that, all your creations, man. Oh, 
Oh my god, distributed version control systems. I feel so bad for people that still use SVN. Oh my god, you don't even know what you're missing. Everybody out there in the world, if you're if you're if you're listening to this right now and you use SVN, try Git. Seriously, you're in you're in the, in the ancient dark ages. SVN is the dark ages of version control systems. It's not just an opinion. <clears throat> Get large file storage. Open source extension that replaces large files with text pointers. Uh huh. Hmm. Yes. Yes, he was. Linus, Linus Torvalds, he created Git. I'm pretty sure he was this, the main guy that created Git. Yeah, he did. He did, for sure. He talks about it in his... Um, if you haven't seen... Oh, that's a pretty cool thing, too. If you haven't seen Linus Torvalds' uh, TED Talk... Did you know he has a TED Talk? It's pretty cool. You should check this out. Good TED Talk. Wow. Wow, so we have a, everybody has a gig of free storage. That's cool. Thank you. Thank you, GitHub. Yes, right? Who doesn't love Linus Torvalds? Linus, Linus, what's is I heard his name was Linus, but uh, then on the TED Talk, he said Linus, I think. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> right? Yes? <laughs> yeah, you gotta love it, man, when somebody stands up and, like, stands up to a company like that or something. Loving the behavior for these guys. Gotcha! Okay, I'm thinking though that this area might need to be less wide. Or, I mean, less, less narrow. Like, it's really cramped. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna try that. Let's try out, um... Where is that? Constance? He took an avian creature and flipped it. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I heard a really old soundbite of him saying his name from years ago. And he said, my name's Linus Torvalds. And I pronounce Linux as Linux. So I think it is Linus, but... Conrad Zeus? Who's that? Oh, is that the guy that did Zeus? The Zeus? Oh, okay. Wait, well, how do you? I don't even know how you pronounce that. Z that Linux O distro. He's <laughs> Archaeopteryx. Hey, what's up, Qlab? Welcome in. Okay, so if I add this pattern thing, a pattern flag, pattern difficulty, pattern flags. What pattern is that again? Pattern um, stairs? Yeah, oh, pattern stairs. Flag min wall thickness. Okay, so that'll give the stairs rooms a minimum wall thickness. It'll feel more open. Empoli? Cool. Yes, Space My Name, capital C. That's the movie I was talking about a second ago. Totally. Definitely worth checking out. 
getting too used to these guys or maybe there needs to be more of them what's this ice ball dragon eyes burlock there we go let's add some more of them more of these guys uh-huh Oh, he's the guy that made environmental section alpha? Nice. Nice, look at that. That's awesome. Okay, maybe they do need to be icy. Maybe every other one of them is icy. Oh, that could happen. Like, oh yeah. Okay, I got an idea of how this guy could randomly have the ice effect. Okay, so sequence icy. If um, Rand every chance in, let's say it's a pretty low chance. So like if Rand 8.0, if if mode zero, uh, mask collision. We're gonna add on the ice effect and then go mode one so it doesn't happen again. So that should make some of these guys icy sometimes. Actually, let's do this through this random effect to be a little lower. Oh, maybe not so low. Okay, so there, let's see if some of these guys become icy now. I didn't see any of them actually getting the ice effect there. Oh, that's mask. Oh, 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 oh. So we want to go category. Category ice. That might be setting the category. Nice, salad dogs. <laughs> Man. AI system. Um, behavior category. Not if. There we go. Setting. Oh. Oh. Okay. This can just be category foe comma ice. And then I think he would he would need like some kind of special animation. So his color changes, like his eye, maybe his eye color changes to be something other than pink when he's icy. So let's say it looks midge ice. Idle. Idle icy. 
and then his his eye turns into pure ice color. And maybe he has a cloud of ice or something that comes around him. Knocked down a wall. Explains the nanosecond. They started talking about circuits that acted in nanoseconds, billionths of a second. Well, I didn't know what a billion was. I don't think most of those men downtown know what a billion is either. <laughs> if you don't know what a billion is, how on earth do you know what a billion is? I'm Boston Finn. Only one morning, in total desperation, I called over to the engineering building, and I said, please cut off a nanosecond and send it over to me. The first compiler? Now, what I wanted when I asked what? was, I wanted a piece of wire, which would represent the maximum distance that electricity could travel in a billionth of a second. And of course, it wouldn't really be through wire. The outer space, the velocity of light, surface travel, the velocity of light, and use your friendly computer, you'll discover that a nanosecond is 11.8 inches long. The maximum limiting distance that electricity can travel in a billionth of a second. Finally, at the end of about a week, I called back and said, I need something to compare this to. Could I please have a microsecond? <laughs> I've only got one microsecond, so I can't give you each one. <laughs> Here's a microsecond. 984 feet. I sometimes think we ought to hang one over every programmer's desk or around the neck so they know what they're throwing away when they throw away microseconds. Now, I hope you'll all get the, your nanoseconds. They're absolutely marvelous for explaining to wives and husbands and children Admirals, generals, people like that. An admiral wanted to know why it took so damn long to send a message by a satellite. And I had to point out that between here and the satellite, there were a very large number of nanoseconds. Well, you can explain these things. It's really very helpful, so be sure to get your nanoseconds. Grace Hopper. That's cool. I didn't know anything about her before. Mm hmm. Okay, so now it should be visible when this guy changes to icy. Should be interesting. See if this works. Get the category ice. Oh, and I can even check if it's, well, I already did the mode thing. Oh, see there, yeah, that guy turned icy. I think I want them to turn back now. So there's a random chance they can turn icy and then a random chance they can turn not icy. If mode one, if ran five, category foe, skin nothing, mode zero. Not icy is noticey. <laughs> noticey. Oh yeah. Yeah, config, right? Stand up or sit down desk. Okay, one thing though, this animation needs a little bit of like this, this like glowy icy effect here needs to glow more. 
So this frame will do 20, 40, 6, or 20, 40, 80. 20, 40, 80, 40, 20, yeah. Or no. I don't know. Just 20, 40, 80, 100, 60. Yeah, now it looks like it's actually glowing. And bonus, this will look the same when it's reflected in the reflection shader. Yeah, nice. I'm happy with my setup too. I mean, <laughs> I'm in a closet here with, I got my keyboard on some pile of boxes and my computer sits on the top of a shelf and then when I sit down I sit on a drum throne I don't even I don't have a desk I don't even have a desk but I can sit or stand you definitely get by on a budget that's for sure but it would be nice to have a really nice desk I hear you especially one that could convert now that's cool I really like how these guys can change from regular mode into icy mode and then if you get hit by the icy guys you're frozen now it's like they're not as hard as they used to be but still they have that chance to be hard to be difficult i think this should be a little less like maybe point a chance in every eight one chance every eight seconds that this they'll switch they getting lit on fire oh okay so the midge ice no damage from ice but do take damage from fire so now if i hit them with fire they're going to create a little fire um a fire entity oh that's like totally cheating there yeah now dude fire is amazing Yep, this is the secret right here. If you're in the ice dungeon, you need, some, you need to craft some fire. Dude, that should work, these guys. with that this guy turned out really interesting a lot more interesting than I thought he would at first it's doing all right it's a lot of drop frames today okay I'm gonna check this guy in now get add midge ice for lock ice Zilton, what's up, man? You got a new computer? You didn't even notice? Good. Good. Maybe it wasn't really, like, it didn't really affect much. I don't know why. Maybe Twitch is twitched out today. It can actually run games? Yay! Oh, yeah. <laughs> T 
Tick. Uh, he's excited. He's got a new computer. Pulverizer. Should there be a pulverizer? Let's try a pulverizer. That's weird. Try a little more health. Right on, then you'll have two computers. That's that's too hard. Maybe point seven five to one. Not too much. Now I'm gonna try fighting him without the fire sword though. To, just to make sure they're still reasonably, you know, not too difficult. If you know what you're doing, you can still you can totally beat these guys. Okay, so checking stuff in. This is great. New enemy, the ice midge. Okay. Um, I think is there enough time to do one more enemy? I got an, one more idea for an enemy. It's the same kind of thing as the Verloc. Yeah, there's 10 more minutes. I think I can, I can at least get this started. <laughs> Maybe even a couple more O's. <laughs> no way, Zilton won free parking. That's the second day in a row Zilton won free parking. Zilton, you weren't even here and you won free parking yesterday. How many more enemies I have planned? Like at least three or four new enemies per dungeon. So that's maybe four or five more dungeons. At least at least four or five enemies or so per. So yeah, at least 20, 20 to 30 more enemies, not counting bosses. Do you want to park too? Yeah, where, where's Teeks's points? Come on. So I'm going to copy the sack to, um, what's this going to be called? I 
guess it's just a midge spawner. All right. Um, now, wait, did I copy this? Yeah, the sack. Okay. Let's open up this new foe, the spawner midge ice. And let's give it some kind of crazy color or something so we know that it's um, not the regular sack. So like that. And instead of spawning spides, they spawn midge ices. And now we just got to put them in the world. So foes where does it do the sack make all these sacks so they're not yeah so totally totally the dungeons are gonna have definitely unique enemies yeah yes yeah it is it's becoming more and more like links of the past than the original zelda but i but the overworld and the the core thing that I wanted to bring from the from the original Zelda was the freedom you had as a player. You know what I mean? You could go in any direction. You didn't even have to get the sword. There was no freaking stupid tutorials. That kind of stuff. That's that's the heart of what I want to create with Songbringer is like something where you feel like you can truly explore explore the world however you want, not not how the game like that doesn't railroad you into certain decisions and stuff like that. Mm, okay, so now I've I've turned off the the regular sacks. Now we're gonna do a sacks ice one z one through nine. Style car six, oh, max one. Uh, no, we don't need to do max one. And this is going to be a spawner midge ice. Okay, let's see if it. Put that somewhere. Let's turn on. Uh, I'm turning on a debug thing to make sure that this is. It's putting that particular foe type here. Yeah. Oh, Link's the Past is your favorite Zelda. Yeah. It was. It was my favorite Zelda in ways, but I think it really it missed something from the original Zelda. There was always something missing for me as a player. Cool, we got a sack ice at 354. Nice. So 35. Oh, it's the room straight up from here. Alright. Yeah, just a little. Just a little. Yeah. Okay, cool. Look at that. We got a bunch of these midges coming out of this sack thing here. But now really all I want to do now is just make it so this sack here. It looks totally different. I don't want it to look like that at all. Man, those guys are tough. If I just stand here, I'll die so fast. No, oh, maybe not as fast as I thought. I you get to see a lot of these, and you're frozen. Uh, in Zelda 1, you can mostly see the dungeons in any order. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. 
I love that freedom, man. That was that's my favorite part about Zelda is that, that freedom to go wherever you wanted, do whatever you wanted. Don't even get the sword if you don't want. Okay, so what I'm imagining for this sack thing is like a pillar at an angle and it looks like it's made of ice and it has some holes in it. What's my opinion of Zelda 2? Yeah, um, I liked it. I the, When I saw a playthrough of it, or when I saw a speedrun of it, I realized just how much I played it as a kid. I thought I didn't play it that much, but I played it a lot. I forgot how much I played Zelda 2. Um, I really, I don't know. It just really wasn't my cup of tea. But I think it does stand on its own in like its its own like game you know it's it really it was a cool game i guess but i guess it just wasn't my favorite zelda you know i don't know i think it was kind of bold of them to do that that much of a departure from the original zelda um so yeah and i think for some people it's like their favorite zelda so yeah, it's like you either love it or hate it for sure. What about you? What's your opinion of Zelda 2? Oh, you love it? Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that I hated it. I definitely did not hate Zelda 2, but I didn't didn't love it. Okay, so I'm going to draw a quick pillar thingy. What? Why did it create a grayscale image? I feel like Zelda 2 had a kind of mysterious feeling. Yeah, it did, huh? Yeah, it did. It definitely did. The music was quite memorable too. I forgot how I forgot how much I forgot how memorable the Zelda 2 music was. Right? This is like, it gets to you fast. Right. The towns were were interesting too. But yeah, I get you on the mystery, man. The, there was it was very mysterious, and they they hid so much stuff. It's like what this whole dungeon is just a freaking random encounter. Okay, this is kind of what I'm imagining that these midges come out of. It's like a pillar thing like this. So I'm gonna. Save this. This is the spawner midge ice. <laughs> Almost had a bean dip. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh. Man, this is starting to take forever to rebuild that sprite sheet. Might need to make a smaller sprite sheet or something. All right, yeah, so that kind of looks too bright, but that's kind of what I was thinking. It's like some kind of like pillory thing that it emits, or like maybe like a honeycomb thing. I might change the look entirely, actually. But it just basically spawns all these bitch guys. That's it for today's video. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Until then.